the Mayafis and friends visit Tuasmara, Masawa and Adulis. Francis Mahafi and Arlena Mahafi moved to Eritrea in 1945. All of their seven children, five boys and two girls, were born in Asmara except James, the eldest, who was born in Asaf and raised in Sanafe, Eritrea. After living for 27 years in Eritrea, the Mahafi family moved to the United States in 1966. In June 2016, Dr. Samuel Mahafi, Wadi Sanafe, passed away in Washington State, USA. His last wish was that he wanted his remains to be buried in Sanafe, Eritrea, the town where he grew up. Dr. Samuel Mahafi came to the United States for the first time when he was 14 years old when his family moved to the United States. In December 2018, his family and friends went to Eritrea to fulfill his wish. This is part one of Mahafi's and friends' visit to Eritrea. Growing up, I heard many stories from my dad about his experience growing up in San Afe, Eritrea as a child. After hearing these stories throughout my childhood, I finally had the chance to visit Eritrea for a month. While I was here, I met amazing people and visited amazing places. Here are my reflections on the first portion of our trip. As one of our first adventures in Asmara, we went with the owner of Jumbo Glass to his glass making warehouse. When we got to his business, the owner showed us all of the different products he makes for individuals and local businesses, including a beautifully ornate glass aquarium, which I would love to have in my own home. In addition to his glass making business, we were extremely fortunate to be able to see his extensive collection of antiques and collectibles, which gave us a glimpse into the history of Eritrea and its culture.
After our first two days in Asmara, we decided to take a trip to Misawa for Christmas Day. On the way there, I heard many stories from my Uncle Paul and Peter about how their family used to spend a lot of time in Misawa. Although they lived in San Afe, they often spent Christmases in Misawa with the entire family. So they had many fond memories of the landscape and the city itself. After many hours and many stories, we made it to Misawa. For me, the museum in Misawa was one of the most impressive parts of our trip. Our guides took us on a tour of the entire museum, including sections on marine life, archaeology, ethnography, and culture and the armed struggle in Eritrea. Before coming to Eritrea, I feel like I didn't know much about the history. Going to the museum really helped me learn about the history of the armed struggle and how it has affected who Eritrea is today. After visiting the museum in Misawa, we went with the two archaeologists who worked there to Adulis, a famous archaeological dig site. After a long and bumpy road, we finally made it to Adulis. As we walked to the site, I was struck by the intense desert heat. It was quite the contrast to the extremely cold winters I often spend in Washington State. As we walked around to the various excavation sites, the guides told us much about the history of all of the sites. Although a lot of the main discoveries happened in the 1960s, the archaeologists of today still spend a month every January excavating the sites and making new discoveries. So as you can see, initially when Parveni excavated this site, he had two different thoughts. He thought that given that there were uh, four circular disks at the top, the one that are supporting the pillars, he thought that this was the altar of the sun. So that was his initial thought. So he thought that this was the altar of a son. Then later on, around 4th or 5th century, a church must have been built on top of it. But uh, current studies have determined that the, uh, the structure, especially the podium structure and the upper church structure, have been built at the same period. As we stood there listening to the archaeologists, I was struck by the contrast between Misawa, the current port city of Eritrea, and Adulis, the ancient port city now left in ruins from decades of conflict and natural disasters. All that was left was the remains of the excavation before us. As you can see, this is the wall structures. There are a number of small rooms that have been discovered by Paribeni at the same time, still covered beneath this sand. So some of their remnants, as you can see, have come to light uh, by the rainfall. As we drove back from Adulis, we watched the sunset behind the mountain and heard more stories from the archaeologists about their work at the excavation sites. Through their work, they'd found beads, coins, bone fragments, and other old artifacts from ancient civilizations. Many of these finds now sit in the museum in Misawa and Asmara, and are important in documenting the history of the country. For dinner in Misawa on Christmas Day, we went to a famous restaurant which served fish freshly caught from the Red Sea, cooked in the traditional Afar method. Before dinner, we had the chance to see this traditional cooking method in action. 
The chef showed us how he spread Betty Betty on the fish and then placed it deep inside the traditional oven. We were all very impressed with the cooking method of the lowland kitcha, which was prepared by putting the dough on the side of the oven where the fish were cooking. We also learned the difference between lowland kitcha and highland kitcha, and we found both very delicious. Mm -hmm.